Hello and welcome to National Park Wild. I'm Eric, and recently I went to Acadia National Park in Maine. In this video, I will be talking about my experience there, along with giving some travel tips you can use if you come to this park, and I'll give overall thoughts at the very end on this park and how good it is. Is it the best national park in the east? Let's find out. So beginning with getting into Mount Desert Island, a very pleasant area. I enjoy it, and then of course you have the national park, a lot of that island is national park. So you have that great scenery aspect. Though it is similar to St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands National Park, where some of the island is towns and civilization, and is not entirely national park and recreation. So the first hike we did was Bubble Rock. We did this the night we got there, so it was an evening hike. Very foggy when we first got there, and while fog did obscure views for a point, at a point some of the fog cleared, and it created a quite interesting and mysterious view with bubble rock in the front, mountains in the back, the sun barely shining through the fog, and it was quite the photo opportunity. I enjoyed this hike a lot. It's not the most strenuous, and it's definitely one I recommend if you come here. Next, we went to Cadillac Mountain for the sunrise the next morning. This is very important to know. You must get a reservation to get up Cadillac Mountain at any time. The sunrise is harder to book, and I'm not sure how far in advance you should book it or you have to book it, but I know we booked many, many months in advance. So it can be hard to get in because this is a very popular site. Because going to Cadillac Mountain, I think it was the most beautiful view in the park. The sunrise, such interesting colors. Some you've seen in sunrises before, I'm sure. But they take up so much of the sky, and because you're on a mountain overlooking the sea, it's fascinating. I would call it the best view in the park. And I think many would as well that are not me, and that is why so many people want to go up here. So be sure to reserve very early on, basically as soon as you know you're going to go to Acadia, you'll want to try to get a reservation, because it is hard to get up, and it is more than worth it if you do. So Cadillac Mountain, you overlook so much of the island, you can walk around, panoramic views, see so much different area, see lighthouses from above, it's definitely my favorite area in the park. Now, to talk a little more about the Mount Desert Island crowds. They can be quite major. It is a very crowded area. This is the primary area of the park. And this is actually among the smallest national parks in the U.S. So, it's quite congested in areas. As you would expect with a popular park, and as you've seen in some parks, such as if you've heard about Yellowstone, Grand Canyon, Zion, Yosemite, the primary tourist areas get huge amounts of crowds. Part of the reason for this, though, is because they are great areas to go to. So if you want to see some of the best areas of Acadia, you may have to fight with crowds. I'll talk a little more about that in a moment. So as we start heading toward the Park Loop Road, we see a deer in the morning, and we see a beaver running along a dam. And that was pretty much the extent of mammal wildlife we saw on this trip. I'll get to some other wildlife later in the video as well. But the first stop we had on the Park Loop Road was the Precipice Trail. When we went, the trail was closed for the summer due to peregrine falcon nesting season. We were okay with this, and we did look for falcons, as there are rangers typically there who are also looking for the falcons and can kind of show you where they are if we see them. We did not end up seeing falcons, but I'll get to a falcon sighting later that was quite interesting. So you do have a spectacular rocky cliff to look up at, though, if you are at the bottom of the Precipice Trail. But if you want to hike that trail, it is among the best from what I hear. Make sure you plan. The next area we went to was the Sand Beach parking lot. This is more or less the primary parking lot in the entire national park. It is not huge, unfortunately, but it gives you access to Ocean Path and Beehive Trail and Sand Beach. So it is a destination where you will want to stop. If you cannot find parking, many people will park along the road. And this can extend for literally miles in both directions people are parking. So you will want to hope you can find a parking spot. I think it's normally better to just wait for somebody to leave or go to one of the main parking lots over by, such as Thunder Hole. That could be a good area. It's not too far a walk if you want to go back to Beehive. And I think it is manageable. But keep in mind, that is where the crowds can be the worst. And I should mention, 
with the crowds, June is the best time to go summer-wise. You do not want to go here in July because it gets too congested. I don't know from experience, but from my understanding, as with any national park, July is peak season. There are some exceptions to that, but this is definitely one of the parts where July is a peak time. August is a peak time. That is when everyone will be there. That's when you will not be able to find parking, won't be able to get anywhere, and where the crowds can be a dampener in the experience. In June, it was not a huge deal. I was all right with it. And Ocean Path was the hike that we did first in this area. It is relatively flat. There's some ups and downs, but they're never too difficult. And this trail runs along the road for many parts, but you get some fantastic views. Several people would choose to drive to the Thunder Hole parking lot and Otter Cliffs parking areas instead of taking this trail. I recommend walking the trail because you get several views of unique ocean rocks that you would not get otherwise. So I definitely recommend taking the Ocean Path Trail, as it is fantastic. Thunder Hole is an interesting site because it really is quite amazing to see water bubbling out of this one area. It makes a sound watching the tides go in and out. It's not large scale, but it is impressive, and it's quite a fun area to be at. The next area on this trail was the previously mentioned Otter Cliffs. Otter Cliffs are quite fascinating due to the sheer steepness of them, but the fun thing about this area is the view you get from the top of the cliffs because you look back over toward Thunderhole all the way to Sand Beach where you started. So it gives a very interesting perspective because you've probably walked mile and a half, two miles from Sand Beach, assuming you did start on that trail. So it's quite amazing to see this, and I enjoy it. It's spectacular, and it's just a unique trail because most trails in national parks go into the backwoods or the desert or that sort of thing. This one mostly stays along the accessible path, and even though it's right next to the road, it provides views a driver would not be able to experience or see. So I highly recommend this trail, and Beehive is what followed for us. Beehive is a strenuous trail. It is not a long one. It's about a mile and a half, but it is steep. My best advice, 100% go up the beehive way. Most people do. And the reason you want to do this is because you're climbing ladders. You don't want to do this backwards. You don't want to do any of the steep part backward. And honestly, the trail back down is pretty difficult too. But it's much better to do that part down because it is much easier and much less risk of injury. Regarding the trail itself, I would say Beehive was probably my favorite trail in the park. It is definitely a tough one, and I would say, in a way, it is reminiscent of something like Angel's Landing, while so different in many ways. The big thing about it that is similar is having to have metal supports to get up. For Angel's Landing, you use the chain to walk across. For this one, you have iron rungs and ladders. So that is definitely something that kind of seemed like a connection to me. And while I don't think the view is quite as breathtaking as Angel's Landing, I did enjoy it a lot. You are relatively high up, and you can look down to Sand Beach, you can look all the way over to Otter Cliffs, to the unique rocks that I was mentioning from the Ocean Path. You get pretty much panoramic views of this very nice coastal landscape. And it's probably one of the best views in the park. Not quite Cadillac Mountain for me, but definitely stellar. And here is where we got to see a peregrine falcon. It was flying almost level with where we were standing as we were climbing up. And it really felt like, wow, we're all the way up here with the falcon. Even though it's not like you're 5,000 feet in the air. In fact, the entire thing is probably 600 feet tall. It is definitely a perspective. And that's kind of something that stands out about Acadia. A lot of the views are not the tallest but they feel vast because of the perspective they give you of the rest of the area. Because Acadia is a small park, but it feels big when you're on the trails. And I did love that. Another nice view was being able to look down at this one pond from all the way high up and seeing at the ground level a blue heron and some ducks. So there was more wildlife to this trail. Beehive was an excellent one. And there was one other thing I should say about trails. 
There are signs everywhere about ticks and poison ivy. You'll definitely want to be wary of those. Try not to touch any plant, even accidentally. You might mildly touch some grasses for a little bit, and you'll be fine. But there's always the chance you could end up with ticks and poison ivy. And those are unpleasant, I know from experience. So definitely keep that in mind. It's usually good to wear long sleeves on a hike like that, so you have less chance of having skin contact with anything. And regarding mosquitoes and black flies, those are much more prominent in July, so that's another reason to go in June. And I just wanted to get out of the way for hikes. So we continue along the Park Loop Road, and we do some other things outside of it later and on it later. But we just drive the entirety of the Park Loop Road after that. And bear in mind, the sand beach part of this road and most of the eastern part of the Park Loop Road is one way. That shouldn't be too big of an issue, but just know that you cannot drive the opposite direction. The Loop Road is nice. There are a lot of views that you get of the rocks. It's enjoyable, very pretty, and there's a few really gorgeous ones that stand out, mainly near the southern end and the western part of the road. Those are the most enjoyable. And I didn't think the road actually felt too congested when driving on it, especially in the one-lane area, because the one-way feels like a two-lane road, even though it is only one lane for people. And overall, I did feel that this was a very strong scenic drive in the park, though I do think it is very important to be able to hike certain parts of this if you can. Following this, we went to the Jordan Pond area. Jordan Pond is beautiful. It is quite large, and you have mountains behind it. It's very picturesque. And it's among the most breathtaking views in the entire park. I enjoyed being able to walk along the loop. And it is just a very pleasant area. The loop itself I thought was very quiet. And it's one of the more calm and relaxing areas in the park. And then Jordan Pond House has some history to it. Though it is definitely a much more crowded area of the Jordan Pond section of the park. The next trail we did was Bar Island. To access Bar Island, you have to get to Bar Harbor. Parking is not super easy to find here, but it is certainly much easier than Sand Beach. And Bar Island Trail is a very tough one to do, not because it's strenuous, but because you have to get to an island. Hence the name. You have to walk across a sandbar. You have approximately three hour window that you can walk on this due to low tide. And that, I just find, so intriguing. Being able to walk on what is typically ocean is such a fun and unique experience that I hadn't done in pretty much any other national park. So we walk along the sandbar. We look in some of the pools looking for things like starfish and crabs. We didn't see a whole lot of wildlife, but it was still pleasant. And then on the actual island, you walk to the top of it, and there are wildflowers, and that's enjoyable. It's not the most scenic of hikes, but I do think the experience of walking along the sandbar that isn't always there is one that stands out about this hike and makes it overall very worth your time. And the hike is not too strenuous either. And one thing I should mention because I said this is in Bar Harbor, Bar Harbor is one of those towns that's near a national park that is fairly crowded and has a lot of those tourist kind of things. It's similar to Gatlinburg in a way. However, I will say I prefer this town to Gatlinburg by quite a bit. It just doesn't seem as touristy and seems more aware of the fact that there's a national park near it. And I also thought it was less crowded than Gatlinburg. So some might be very bothered by it. But especially if you go in June, I don't think trying to get to Bar Island will be hurt too much by the fact that you have to go through Bar Harbor. Acadia Mountain Trail is the next one we go to. This was a very interesting mountain hike because you do legitimately have to scale some rocks despite it not being a climb but a hike. You will climb at points and that is definitely more strenuous than certain mountain hikes have done. And I dare say this is on par with Beehive in terms of difficulty, at least for parts of it. Going down is not too bad. And the views from this one are very different. You view the sort of sound that is in Mount Desert Island, and you can see other mountains that are surrounding, and it is a two and a half mile hike, and it is a loop, but sometimes you might come out at a different area than you start, but not by a lot, 
there's kind of a point one mile walk between two different trailheads that go to the same place. And if I had to give advice for which way to go, I would say it's best to take the gravel road up and then you will come to the more difficult parts that you also have to go up. And then the intermediately difficult parts, you go down. So you'll do the most difficult parts on the way up, and that is better because you do legitimately have to climb to get to them. And overall, Acadia Mountain has stellar views and is among the most scenic in the park. Even if it's not quite as stunning as, say, Beehive Trail, it's very close and a very enjoyable one. The next trail we did was nearby Beach Mountain. This one is shorter. It is about one mile, but it is a similar view. And I'd say it's better if you want a less strenuous hike, if you want a similar view to Acadia Mountain. I did prefer the Acadia Mountain Trail because I liked the challenge of climbing. But you do get to the top of Beach Mountain and you see a fire tower. And typically you can climb up parts of this fire tower and get a better view. So it is overall a very nice trail. Another thing I should point out, this is a trail where there were a lot of dogs. And whether or not this is significant to you, I do want some people to know that this is a very dog-friendly national park. Dogs are allowed pretty much anywhere. I'm not sure if there are any restrictions on if they can climb, say, Beehive Trail. I would hope there are because I'm not sure how a dog would get up the ladder. But I do want people to know if, say, you're allergic of dogs, if you have fear of dogs, anything like that, just know that there are a lot of dogs in Acadia National Park. Next, we went over to the Bass Harbor Head Lighthouse. And this is probably the most iconic photo you get in Acadia National Park. This is one that many have seen. You have the nice lighthouse with the rocks in front of it. And honestly, it is just a beautiful, beautiful area. You get down to the area where you can barely see the lighthouse. You're right along this pathway. And you can walk further along the rocks. Many do. And you get that photo. Or you just sit and admire it. Either way, it is probably one of the most beautiful sights in the eastern U.S. The lighthouse is very picturesque, and the rocks in front of it are many different colors, intricate, and gorgeous. So I really enjoyed that area, and I would say it is among the best in Acadia, and definitely a must. Though certainly a very crowded area, typically, as much of Mount Desert Island is. The next area we go to is one that is not quite as scenic, but is nearby. This was the Ship Harbor. Ship Harbor Trail does give access to some things, such as very nice rock areas. But I do think it is one that's just a smaller nature hike that is enjoyable and takes you through forests. But if you are going to the park for the huge highlight areas, I would say this is probably not a top priority trail. There are many other nice trails in the park that I would take over this one. This is a good trail for sure. There are no bad trails in Acadia, but I don't think this is the most scenic one, and it also doesn't have as much history or even nature as some of the other trails in the park. And the final area we go to is Cadillac Mountain again, this time at sunset. We went a bit before sunset, but you're able to stay up for it, and it is almost as beautiful as the sunrise. We started there at relatively daylight, and it was a very enjoyable view and quite different from when we were down there in the sunrise morning. And the fun thing is being able to look at Bar Island, which you can see from there, and we saw when the water had flooded the sandbar and when the sandbar was opened up and people were walking on it. So it was fascinating to see that. And the colors of the sunset are not quite as bold as the sunrise, but they are just as vibrant in a way. Even if they don't cover as much of the sky, they are almost as beautiful. And a sunrise and sunset in Acadia is some of the best of any sunrises and sunsets I've seen in any national park. And this was a beyond special way to end my time in Acadia. One thing I do want to touch on, there were a few wildlife settings that I did not mention in the video yet. We saw wild turkeys, bald eagles, Canadian geese, cormorants. We saw one snake, 
and a slug. And that is pretty much the extent of wildlife we saw. Maybe some small fish in water areas. But Acadia is not the park to go to for the viewing of large mammals. Bird watching is probably the best wildlife you get here. I mentioned the falcons and the eagles. And there is plenty to enjoy here in that regard. So overall, Acadia National Park. Is it my favorite national park in the east? Yes. I do enjoy a few national parks in the east quite a bit. Dry Tortugas was my favorite before this for its stellar snorkeling, history, and seclusion. Acadia does not have snorkeling, that I did at least, or seclusion. But it is one where the scenery is just as good, if not better, than Dry Tortugas. Now, in terms of a ranking, I actually have it at number 23 out of 62, which may sound low as many put it in their top 10. But keep in mind for me, anything in my top 30 could easily be number one if the others didn't exist, because it's just that I do like others better. Acadia might be crowded, and its scenery is the best in the east, though there are many western national parks I prefer for scenery. However, I enjoyed the recreation of this park so much. There's a wide variety of hiking trails that many have done, and I'm sure many enjoy. The sunrise and sunset were special experiences that I think were among the best sunrises and sunsets as I've seen, and that does set this park apart. And you have other hikes, you have some wildlife, a variety of scenery. As I think this coastal park does have some diversity in its scenery. And while I guess it's not technically the most vast or dramatic of views you can get in any national park, Acadia has so much to offer, and I highly recommend a visit here, as it is definitely a beyond wonderful national park. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions about Acadia National Park, please leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Subscribe to the channel for more national park content. Like the video if you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.